This is the range country, where the pounding hooves of untamed horses still thunder over mountains, meadows, and canyons. Every herd has its own leader, but there is only one fury. Fury, king of the wild stallions. And here in the wild west of today, hard-riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch, and Pete, his top hand, who says he cut his teeth on a branding iron. Fury! Fury! Wild as Fury is, that's the one human voice he's learned to love and obey. The voice of the boy who once saved his life, Jim Newton's boy, Joey. a mutual trust and affection that everyone can understand. Especially a woman like Helen Watkins, Joey's school teacher and unfailing champion. Kneel down, let me get on you. And there they are together, a great wild horse and the only person on earth who can ride him, Joey and Fury. I think it has to go up a little, Pete. Uh, no, that's too much now. Bring it down. No, back up now. Well, make up your mind before this buck jumping box throws me. Now, that's got it. Yeah. Ain't bad if I say so myself. Aha, uh -huh. looks good. Hey, where's Joey? Well, last I seen, he was reciting the fury out of his Boy Scout book. <laughs> Well, it's a big day in Joey's life. He wants to be letter perfect in his initiation this afternoon. Yeah, but he's got fury reciting, too. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> One well, of the first requirements of being a scout is to have a sound and healthy body. Scout is physically strong, chapter 22, page 403 in the Boy Scout Manual. Well, why aren't you eating your lunch? I guess I'm not hungry. It isn't coming, is it, Jim? I don't know, Joey. I wouldn't worry about it. I can't be inducted without it. Anybody here who calls himself Joey Newton? Huh? Well, speak up. Else I'd like to send this package back to the Boy Scout Outfitters at Capital City. Special delivery man just come by and handed it to me. Gee, it came! Now hold on, young fellow. Don't write me down. Can I go to my room? Go ahead. <laughs> that boy ain't eating enough to keep a hummingbird alive. I don't think he's very interested in food right now, Pete. Scott is trustworthy, Scott is loyal, Scott is helpful, Scott is courteous, Scott is brave. Now repeat the Scout Elf. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. 
All right, Jim Newton, Scoutmaster of Troop 232 of the Boy Scouts of America, take great pride in bestowing the rank of Tenderfoot upon Joey Newton because he's passed all the requirements which entitle him to that rank. <laughs> Tenderfoot Newton, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Give me the hand clasp. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Mr. Newton. I came to collect for the paper. Oh, how much do I owe you? Two dollars and thirty cents. Let's see. Two dollars? Thirty cents. Why don't you join the scouts, Buzz? That's kid stuff. Very important kid stuff. Troop 232 could use a hard-working young fellow like you. I got better things to do with my time. Why Here's you? your receipt. Thanks, Buzz. I wish you'd think it over about joining. It's a pretty fine organization for boys. For kids, you mean? Not me. What do you think of it, Fury? Isn't it a beauty? <laughs> Hi, Buzz. I made it. I'm a scout. Hooray for your side. Well, I guess it'll be more than I can. <laughs> at the laundry to get out tonight. That ironing room sure melts you down. <laughs> Had your supper yet? I made out all right. How about you? I'll fix something. You look pretty tuckered out yourself. Collection day on my paper out. I had to make two trips to most of the places. There's our sure one on the dresser. Buzz, I don't know what I'd do without you. That $22 a week from the laundry sure doesn't go far these days. Buzz, where'd this extra ten dollars come from? Well, I finished that job for Mr. Larson this morning. What job? Just cleaning out his warehouse and stacking stuff up on the shelves. Oh, Buzz, that's too big a job for a boy your age. I took it easy. A couple hours each day of all week. Buzz, you're trying to do too much. A paper route's all right. But these extra jobs, before and after school, all day Saturday, like today, when you should have been outdoors playing ball with all the other kids. Uh, I get more fun out of helping you, Ma. I believe you do. Buzz, I brought home some nice green apples and some biscuit mix. How would you like some hot apple cobbler and some milk? That'd be great, Ma. To be ready in a jiffy. This is a Y. This is a J. This is a Z. This is a E. This is an F. This is a J. This is a Z. This is a K. This is an R. Hey, what do you fellas think you're doing? Well, hi, Buzz. We're just packing up on the Simmerport Cove. Well, you sure need a lot of practice. You were doing it all wrong. Huh? You weren't making an R. You were making an S. Here, let me show you how it's done. This is an R. Gee, that's right. Jay? What's that? Your name. That's pretty good. Where'd you learn the code? Oh, I studied it. I just picked it up somewhere. You want to be an art troupe. Why don't you join? Are you kidding? We could sure use you. Me join up with a bunch of tin soldiers? That's for the birds. Every kid should be a scout. You mean every kid with a hole in his head. That's the way you feel about it. We don't want you in the scouts. That's okay with me, stupid. 
Out of the way, Rover boy. One side. Who's shoving? You! horses around. Tried to get him to join our troop. He got sore and we had a fight. I never heard of recruiting a scout by fighting with him. I didn't want to fight him, Jim. Guess I just lost my temper. But I don't get it. Buzz knows more about the Simifor Code than any of us. He should be a scout. What's he got against us anyway? I don't think he has anything against us, Joey. I don't understand. Well, I think Buzz has got a problem that you could help him solve. But he doesn't want any help from me. Would just be nice to him. No matter what he does to you, be nice to him. You know, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Remember, no more fights. Your head's made to think with, not to block a left hook. And when you get through with Fury, come on in, we'll paint that shiner a different color. Come on, Fury. Well, Joey, you've been in the scouts for a month now. You're all set to pass your outdoor test for second class? Yes, sir. Off you go. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Fury. You can't go with me this time. I gotta pass this test on my own. Oh, I'll be back later and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Fury! I told you I gotta go alone. I'm going back in your stall and stay there till I get back.
remember us. Aye. Uh, nice must have fish you caught. They were biting good. Buzz, what do you want? I just want you to know that I'm sorry about the fight we had the other day. No, that's all right. Forget it. Would you like to be friends? Well, sure. OK. Uh, where are you going? Taking my second class outdoor test. Hike five miles by compass, make a fire, cook a meal, clean up, and then hike back by using the scout method of walking 50 paces and running 50 paces. Yeah, that's right. Gee, I sure hope I pass. Sure you will. Well, see you around. OK, Buzz. Hey, Joey. Yeah? How'd you like some of these fish? They're more than Mom and I can eat. I sure would. Only I couldn't take them with me. OK, I'll put them on ice for you. Swell. On the way back, I'll stop by your place. OK, see you around. Hey, Joey. Yeah? Good luck. Sure.
splints. That hurt much? Not so much. It's a good thing you didn't get too far away. You saved my life, Buzz. You can thank Fury for that. He kept pushing me toward the well. I didn't know what he was trying to do, but boy, he sure wouldn't let me go. Not too tight? No, it's fine. Gosh, you know as much about first aid as Doc Bennett, or even an Eagle Scout. Hold still, will you? How's that feel now? That's bitter. Thanks, Buzz. I only did what anybody would do. You did what any scout would do, only lots better. Uh, you don't have to be a scout to know about first aid. Well, you should learn about it from the scout manual. How do you know? Sticking out of your back pocket. Aw, uh, I just wanted to see what you guys saw in this scout stuff. So I decided to read up on it. That's all. Buzz, for a kid who doesn't want any part of the scouts, you sure take in a lot of interest in them. Aw, uh, what's the use in trying to kid you now? Sure, I like to be a scout. More than anything in the world. And what's stopping you? I can't afford a joint. I can't even afford to buy a uniform. We got a fund for that. Golly, you don't think we'd let a uniform stop you from being a scout? I pay my own way. I don't want any charity. It isn't charity. We all draw from the fund when we need something. I did, and I'm paying it back at only 10 cents a week. Yeah? Oh, what's the use? I can't spare the time. I gotta keep working to help Mom. We can't live off what she makes at the laundry. We'll help you get your jobs done so you can come to the meetings. That's what scouts are for. To help other people, and each other, too. Ah, oh, forget it. I gotta get you home before dark. Well, you're all set. Looks like you'll be home in time for a fish dinner after all. I had to talk you into joining Troop 232. Come on, Fury. We gotta get Joey back to the ranch. He's getting sort of delirious or something. <laughs> consent, the National Court of Honor of the Boy Scouts of America has voted William Buzz Canfield the Scout Honor Medal for heroism and exceptional achievement in the practice of scout principles and training. Congratulations, Buzz. Thank you, sir. Now, for aiding in the rescue of Scout Joey Newton, our local scout council has voted a special equine honor medal to Fury. Second class scout Newton, will you make the presentation? Here you are, Fury. <laughs> I'll bet you're the first horse who ever won a scout medal. Mm -hmm. 